Greetings, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of ATP, Ask the Pastor. Thanks for joining me. Today, we've got a question about confession and absolution, specifically the nature of the absolution that the pastor speaks. Dear Pastor Sullivan, sometimes Christians from other denominations ask how holy absolution could be valid for the judgment day if it's possible to lose salvation by falling away from faith. Also, how can a pastor speak the absolution if he can't look into the heart of a person? How would you respond to such questions? Well, let's take the second question first, because I think if we understand the nature of the absolution, I think the first question then becomes clear. I think everything falls into place then. So first, um, how can a pastor speak the absolution to a sinner if the pastor can't look into the heart of that person? And, you know, you bring up a good point here. Pastors, it's very true, can't read your heart. In fact, this is something that no human being can do to another human being. We cannot look into another person's heart and read their motivations, no matter how much we want to try sometimes. There's only one that can do that. There's only one heart reader, and that's ultimately God himself. In fact, St. John tells us this of Christ in John 2, verse 25. Christ, who is God in human flesh, knows what's in a man's heart. Now, the important part, I think, with this is that pastors aren't commanded to be heart readers. We're not commanded uh, to look into the heart of those who are penitent. Rather, the command of Christ is the entire basis for giving the absolution, for speaking the absolution to sinners. It doesn't have a thing to do with heart reading. It has everything to do with the command of Christ. So, for instance, Christ promises this in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, to the apostles. He says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So Christ promises them the authority to loose, that is to forgive sins, but also he promises them the authority to bind sins or retain sins so that those sins are not forgiven. Now, he fulfills that promise then on the evening of his resurrection, uh, on the evening of the Easter day, then um, in John chapter 20. So in John chapter 20, verses 22 and 23, it's written that Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, this is a remarkable command and promise that goes with it. God promises all throughout the scriptures to forgive our sins whenever we repent of them. But not only does he promise us to forgive us, but he promises then to send his representatives into the world to speak that word of forgiveness directly to us. So now notice in both Matthew 16 and in John chapter 20, there's no command anywhere to read hearts. There's simply the command to forgive sins to those who are penitent and believing. They're simply given the task of forgiving sins uh, and retaining sins. What makes the absolution, therefore, valid isn't any sort of heart reading. It's simply the command of Christ, the promise of Christ. Now, since Christ commands his servants to forgive the sins of the penitent and believing, that means that both repentance and faith are necessary when one comes to confession. So this is important to remember. Pastors don't forgive the sins of just anybody. Uh, They forgive those who sorrow over their sins, who acknowledge their sins, and who desire to be rid of their sins. So the pastor, as I said above, can't know what's in a person's heart. The pastor can only hear the words that are coming out of a person's lips. Uh, So if a person comes to me and asks me to hear their confession so that I can pronounce Christ's forgiveness on them, then I gladly hear them and I absolve them, uh, just as Christ has commanded. Now, on the other side of this, is the, the other side of this coin that is that people, if they come and are impenitent, that is, if they intend to continue in their sins and even increase in their sins, uh, then we have to retain their sins. Then we don't forgive their sins so that they remain under God's wrath and condemnation s- until they feel their sins and repent of them. Now, this leads to a question that you didn't ask, but it's kind of lurking behind the scenes of your question, and that's, is it possible for someone to come to confession hypocritically so that they can confess their sins, but they're not truly contrite for their sins? And the answer is, well, sure, because human beings, being sinful by nature, are great at being hypocritical about all sorts of different things. This is part of the reason, then, why pastors often find it necessary uh, and beneficial to examine 
the penitent during private confession. Now, such examination isn't always necessary, and the examination isn't so the pastor can get all the sordid details of the sin or the details surrounding the sin. But whenever a pastor feels it's necessary, or beneficial rather, to examine the penitent about their sins, uh, it's so that the pastor can become clear regarding that person's repentance about their sins, but also their faith and trust in Christ and his promise to forgive sins. So any examination that takes place is there to help instruct the penitent about the nature of sin so that then they can understand it and fight against it better in the future, but also then so they can better understand the nature of the gospel and the absolution that's about to be given to them. Now, in all of this, I've been continually saying that both repentance and faith are necessary. That's because confession ultimately has two parts. This is what Dr. Luther teaches us in the small catechism. He says that confession has two parts. The one is that we confess our sins. The other, that we receive absolution or forgiveness from the pastor as from God himself and in no wise doubt, but firmly believe that our sins are thereby forgiven before God in heaven. So when a sinner hears that absolution spoken, and he hears it in faith, believing those words to be not just the pastor's words, but Christ's words, then that word forgives all their sins. Uh, Not just the ones that they've confessed to their pastor, but all their sins. At that moment, the sinner knows precisely and exactly what God in heaven thinks about him. Because he has heard God's word, he's heard God's pronouncement of absolution on him through his called and ordained servant. So the man who has come to confess his sins and done so in faith has no reason to dispute within himself about what God actually thinks of him in heaven. He's just heard Christ's words speak to him through his called and ordained servant. So that's the nature of the absolution then. Uh, And that's why heart reading really isn't necessary when it comes to that because it's all based upon the commandment of Christ. And on the side of the penitent, it requires repentance and faith. Now, Back to your first question about the absolution being valid on the last day, on the judgment day. It's important to remember that the absolution does not forgive future sins. So if, unfortunately, this happens, if a Christian abandons the faith, uh, either through outright apostasy or through the neglect of the word and preaching, then he turns his back on repentance and faith in Christ for the forgiveness of all of his sins. If a Christian falls away from faith, he's no longer repentant and believing, but now he is impenitent and unbelieving, and it's unbelief that damns. So Jesus says in John 3, 18, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And again, at the end of John chapter 3, verse 36, he reiterates that point. And he says, he who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. So if someone says within themselves, I've been absolved today, I'm clear for the rest of my life, that person is deceiving himself because he imagines that his faith can be a one-time thing uh, or that no matter what he does in his life, no matter how he goes out and lives, he can't lose his faith, which simply isn't true according to the scriptures then. God wants us to be daily penitent for our sins because he wants us to be daily believing the gospel, trusting Christ as our righteousness for the forgiveness of our sins then. Now, if we take a step back and we think about it from another perspective, the absolution that a sinner hears privately in private confession uh, is really no different than the absolution that a sinner hears when that is given corporately in the divine service to everyone present uh, or in sermons and preaching for that matter. The only difference is that it's private or personal. It's directed directly to the individual so that that individual has no reason to doubt what God thinks of him. So if you hear the gospel spoken in private absolution, in corporate absolution during the service, uh, or in the sermon, if you hear that and then you comfort your penitent heart with that promise, then your sins are forgiven. However, if you fall away from faith someday and you turn away then, you're not only turning away from Christ, but you're turning away from repentance and faith. And that's really then what damns, that turning away from Christ. When it comes down to it, faith in Christ covers all sins. So that where faith is, no sins remain. But where there is no faith, all sins remain, and there's nothing but condemnation. Thanks for your question. If you've got a question you'd like to ask the pastor, shoot me an email, atpholycross at gmail.com. We'll put you in the queue. It may take a while, but 
We will get to your question eventually. Thanks all for watching. We'll see you next time on Ask the Pastor.